Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn how to make the chevron granny stitch skirt that you just saw at the beginning of the video. And for the materials, you'll need a 5mm crochet hook, any yarn of your choice. I will be using Winter King, a 4 player acrylic yarn, or you can use any scrap yarn of your choice so that you can use it for something so that it doesn't lie around unused. So I'll be using random colors. And then you also need a pair of scissors and a dunning needle to weave in your ends. So let's get started. So this is the skirt that was matching our Valentine's crochet sleeves. And if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial, make sure you check out the description box below. I'll be leaving the link behind so that you can have a matching set for yourself. So this skirt also has a written pattern and you can find all the details and the links of the written pattern in the description box below. I will be dictating the number of starting chains for your skirt depending on the gauge that I used. So I'm using a 5mm and a DK weight yarn. So if you're making an extra small size, you're going to start off with a chain of 125 plus 3 chains. And for all the other sizes, make sure you just see on the screen and do your corresponding size chain. This pattern goes up to size 2XL from extra small. And you're going to start off with a slip knot. And you're going to make a chain that's a multiple of 25 plus three chains. So I have my 25 chains here and I'm going to keep working until I have a multiple of 25 plus 3 chains depending on the size that I'm making for. So for my demonstration I am using a uh, chain of 50 chains which is a multiple of 25 and then I will add three chains so that means I have a total of 53 chains but do your desired number of chains for your size and this is just a demonstration because if I use a very long chain it's going to take a while to record this stitch but I will introduce the actual skirt later on. So I have my 53 chains and you're going to go into the sixth chain from the hook. So we are counting from here. One, two, three, four, five. And into the sixth, you're going to place a double crochet. And then place two more double crochets into the same exact chain. Just like that and then you're going to skip over two chains and then into the third chain you're going to place three double crochets skip over two chains uh, into the third chain you're going to place three double crochets Skip over two chains and into the third you're going to place three double crochets. So once you have a total of four groups of three double crochets, we have this one, this one, this one, and this one. We are now going to create our very first pick by chaining two and then going into the next chain with three double crochets. So that will create our very first pick. 
as you can see here. We've already started creating the chevron pattern. From here, you're going to skip over two chains, three double crochets into the next chain. Skip over two chains, three double crochets into the next chain. Skip over two chains and three double crochets into the next chain. So for this pattern, our magic number is four because every after four groups of three double crochets, we either get a peak or a valley. So now that we had created a peak here, we are going to create a valley here. So what we are going to do, uh, you'll notice that you have, after the peak, you have four groups of three double crochets. And now you're going to skip over five chains, one, two, three, four, five, and into the sixth, you're going to place three double crochets. One, two, and three. And then from here, uh, sorry, skip over two chains, three double crochets into the next. Skip over two chains and three double crochets into the next. Skip over two chains and three double crochets into the next. So just like I had told you earlier on, after four groups of three double crochets, we get a peak. And then after four groups of three double crochets, we get a valley. This is the lower point of our work. The valley is here. And then after four groups of three double crochets, we get another peak. So you're going to make a chain of two and go into the next chain with three double crochets. And then you're going to make, you're going to skip over two chains and then three double crochets into the next. And you'll see your work already creating its movement. So we have this, this, this. And then you're going to make uh, sorry, after your three double crochets, you're going to skip over two chains, three double crochets into the next. Skip over two chains, three double crochets into the next. And at the end of your row, you're going to just keep repeating this, creating peaks and valleys until you have a total of three chains left on your row. So you can see we have our three chains at this point. We have three chains left here. So when you're left with only three chains, you can see you'll be having a total of four groups of three double crochets. One, two, three, four, after your very last peak. And then from here, you're going to prepare for a double crochet by yarning over, skip over two chains and into the very last chain you're going to place a double crochet there. And that's how you wind up row one. Then from here, you're going to make a chain of one and cut your yarn. This project is going to have so many loose ends because we are literally making one row for each and every color. So you're going to decide what your next color will be. Mine will be yellow for demonstration purposes because it's a more visible color. So, you're going to attach your yarn into the very last stitch where you left off with your previous color. Into that double crochet, attach your yarn. And then you're going to make a chain of three, which counts as our very first double crochet. And then you're going to go into the space between the two groups of three double crochets. So we are literally going into this space, this one here. So you're going to go in there with three double crochets and then go into the next here uh, into the space between the groups of three double crochets with three double crochets 
and then go into the next space so repeat this until you get to the peak and after this we are now at the peak and into the peak which is the chain to space you're going to place three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact chain to space And then we are going to go all the way down, placing three double crochets into the spaces between the groups of three double crochets. Until we get to the valley. All right. So we are at this point and you can see how our work is moving. After this, you're going to skip over. When you get four groups of three double crochets after the peak, you're going to skip over six stitches. So you're skipping over this group and this group and going into this space here. So just skip over the six stitches and go into the next space with three double crochets. Just like that and that will maintain the movement of our chevron stitch creating peaks and valleys as you can see here so we're going to go all the way up continuing to place three double crochets in between the groups of three double crochets until we get to the peak and for the peak we place three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the chain two space right. just like this so from here we are going all the way down and to do that, you're going to go into the space, the next space with three double crochets. Three double crochets into the next space. And three more double crochets into the next space. Okay. So this will bring us to four groups of three double crochets after the peak. And that means uh, we are going to keep repeating that because we shall be working on a very long uh, stretch for our actual piece. But for the sample, you're going to repeat that until you get to the end of your row. And then you're going to skip over the next three stitches at the end of the row and then go on top of the chain three the chain three and place a double crochet just like this so this is going to start creating flat edges we're going to work our panel with flat edges then from here you're going to make a chain of one because we have to switch our yarn to another color i told you we are making one row per color so we're going on to our next color and just like we did for row two we are going to attach the same exact way you're going to attach your yarn where you left off with your previous color just like this and then we are going to make a chain of three and then skip over the three stitches and go into the space between the groups of three double crochets and we are going to just repeat the same exact thing that we did for row two until our panel grows and from here i will be introducing my actual piece so that we see the colors that i went for for the skirt design that i made
Right, so we ended up doing a total of 22 rows all together. And this is what you should have. The edge is like this. And then same applies to this side. And then the middle parts. So this is my very last row. And now we are going to level up the V shapes into a flat edge and work on the waistband later on. So to work on that, after your very last row, you're going to just chain one as we did here. You chain one and cut your yarn. Now we are going to attach our yarn in this space. You see how this shape is? So we are dealing with this V shape. Leave alone this part because this is going to help us with the shaping of the waist. We are not going to level up this area here. So start with the very full V and make a slip knot and attach your yarn in any of the top parts of the V. So into the chain to space here. Then uh, what I'm considering is working in the opposite direction of the previous row. So chain three and then skip over all this and then go into the chain one space with three double crochets, just like that. And then chain one, three double crochets into the next, chain one space, chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. And then when it comes to the valley, you're going to just skip over this space in the middle and then cross over to this side without chaining one, just like we've been doing for our previous rows, just like that. So we are maintaining the valley, but we are decreasing to get a flat edge on the top. So from here, chain one, three double crochets into the next. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. And then from here, you're going to directly go into the chain two space and place a double crochet without chaining one. So this is what you should have. Let's go on to the next row. You're going to make a chain of three. Turn your work. And then you're going to go into the next chain one space and place three double crochets. Chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. Now we've reached the valley and we are just crossing over to this side without chaining one. We are placing three double crochets into the chain one space just like that. And then chain one, three double crochets into the next chain one space. And then from here, you're going to directly go into this space, the chain three space with one double crochet. And this is what our V looks like now. You should notice that your V is becoming narrower or flatter when it comes to the edge. So we're going to repeat that. Chain three, turn your work. Go into the next chain one space with three double crochets. And now we are at the valley, so we cross over and don't chain one here. You're just going to go into the next chain one space on the opposite side with three double crochets. From here, you're going to go into the chain three space with one double crochet. And this is what you should have. Now from here, you're going to make a chain of three, turn your work. And since this is the valley, you're going to just slip stitch into the chain three space on the opposite side. And that will have made our work flat at the top. From here, you're going to make a chain of one and cut your yarn, pull through. So this is what you should have. 
should notice that we have leveled the v-shape at the top of our skirt so we're going to repeat that again and again in all these spaces you can see a full v here you're going to repeat the same process here and then we work on this one all the way across until the top is all leveled with the green color So what I want to do is make sure I'm always working in the opposite direction of the previous row when it comes to the very first row of leveling. Just repeat the same exact process. So I wanted to show you what the work will look like after the second leveling and this is what we have. We've repeated the same exact process for another V and we've leveled it up. So go ahead and work all the full Vs and you're going to stop at this point here. Make sure you don't work anything on this side. Alright guys, so we are done leveling the Vs, the full Vs at the top of the skirt, as you can see, everywhere where you see the green leveling up the edge, it's not uh, a chevron look like uh, what we had before or what we have at the base of the skirt. So what we are going to do is fold over our work like this so that the two ends can meet and the next thing we're going to do is weave in all these ends. The fact that I have two tails at each point, I am going to just tie a knot and cut. You can even use a darning needle to weave in the tails if you wish, but I'm going to use this method all the way across so that we get rid of these strings on the edge of the skirt. And then I'll show you what to do around here.
all right so we are done getting rid of all the loose strands on the edge of the skirt the side edge of the skirt you can see this is now clear and this as well so you're going to determine the right side of your work where you want the right side of your work to be because now we are going to create a seam line for our skirt and the seam line is supposed to go to the back of the skirt the wrong side of the skirt so this is what we have and i think we first work on the top leveling in between the two panels so you can see this opening here we're going to first level up this area so you're going to grab your yarn for leveling up mine is green and we're going to attach just like this but this time we're going to be crossing over from this panel to this panel so that we can create a round for our skirt so that it's no longer like a rectangular shape so chain three three double crochets into the next chain one space so just like we were doing before just do that until we have three double crochets left on our row all right so we've reached that point where we have three double crochets and the chain three here so disregard this chain three we are not considering it we are just crossing over just yarn over don't chain one and you're going to skip the this and go into this chain one space and place a double crochet there so what we are doing is creating a valley at this point so after this place two more double crochets to create a total of three double crochets just like that and go all the way up with chain one three double crochets chain one three double crochets just like that and now we're going to skip over the three double crochets and place a single crochet without chaining one so just like we were doing before when it comes to leveling this is what we have chain three turn your work everything else remains the same because now we have created a valley So skip over the valley and then three double crochets into the next chain one space from here you're going to place a double crochet into the chain three space chain three turn your work So this is the very last row where you chain three and then skip over the valley and slip stitch into the chain three after the valley chain one and cut your yarn pull through now we've joined our skirt into a round and this is what you should have exactly this now you're going to turn your work onto the wrong side i'll turn i'll flip my work over to this side like this and we're going to get one of the darker colors you can choose maybe a purple something that's not so visible when it comes to when we flip our work to the other side you can choose either the maroon or the purple or any dark color that you have in your scheme for the skirt and you're going to start joining these two panels together so All right, so we're going to start joining the two panels together and I'll be using the purple color. It's one of the darkest in my collection. So 
we are going to join each and every row with two single crochets so just attach with a slip stitch and then start creating two single crochets in each and every row you get the chain three on the edge of one side and the double crochet on the edge of the other side and place two single crochets into the space and make sure you're joining uh, the same colors together so that you don't misalign the skirt. So this is what we have, and this is going to be the back side of the skirt. The one with the seam line is going to be the back side of the skirt. So now, uh, when it comes to this very big space, we shall also join the double crochet stitches. The very last double crochet stitches before the rows of level leveling the skirt. So just like that, we have the same line of our skirt. After this, you're going to make a chain of one and cut your yarn, pull through. And this is what the seam line is going to look like at the back of the skirt. Now let's flip our work over to the right side and we see how the seam line looks like on the right side of the skirt. So you can see this is the seam line of the skirt but it's almost invisible because we chose to use a darker color or the darkest shade that we have in this uh, pattern. So we're going on to our next step, which should be um, the waistband of our skirt. What you're going to do is getting rid of all these loose ends that we created while leveling up the top of the skirt. So first go ahead and weave in all those tails, or if you use two strands like me, you're going to just make a double knot at each and every point, and then you cut. If you have a darning needle and that's what you wish to use, then go ahead and use it. Make sure your edges are clean and I'll meet you back when I get rid of all this so that we can work on the waistband. All right, now that the top part of the skirt is very clean and neat, we don't have any strands laying around. We're going to grab our yarn and we're going to start creating the waistband of the skirt. So we're going to attach our yarn at the back of the skirt where the seam line is. My seam line is here, so I'll attach my yarn in that space. Chain three and one double crochet into the same space. So we're going to go all the way around placing two double crochets in each and every space. So when it comes to this, we are placing two double crochets in each row and two double crochets into the chain two space of the peak. So 
so all right so we've come all the way around and i've placed two double crochets into the last space now you're going to place one slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round and that marks the end of round one of the waistband so round two you're going to make a chain of three and front post double crochet so for a front post you put your hook under the stitch and then come out so that you're pushing the post of the stitch to the front then work your double crochet as usual then a back post you go in from the back and push the stitch to the back and work your normal double crochet just like that so front post back post we are going to keep alternating between the front post and back post double crochet all the way around until the beginning of our round and this is going to help us create a ribbed effect around the waistband of the skirt So we are coming to the end of the round and I'm still alternating between front post and back post double crochet. After that you will slip stitch into the top of the very first chain three of the round and this is what you'll have. You can see the ribbed effect has started forming. So we are now going to create our very last round and it's going to basically be the same as the previous round. So you just chain three and front post double crochet into each front post double crochet then back post double crochet into each back post double crochet all right so you're going to do that all the way around and make sure your stitches are in the same spot if you have a front post place a front post in it so that these lines can be maintained in one lane. So repeat that around and I'll meet you back here. All right, so we've made it all the way around and I'm placing my very last front for double crochet. I'll slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round and chain one, cut my yarn. Then I'm going to weave in this tail because it's the only tail that I have on this skirt right now. Most of the tails are already off the skirt. So remember we started our round from the back side of the skirt where we have the seam lane. That means the front side of this skirt is on this side now you're going to grab your yarn and hook and we're going to make a very simple drawstring let's make a slip knot and make a very long chain of about 300 chains All right, so I ended up doing a total of 250 chains because 300 was going to be so, so long. Now you're going to get your darning needle and thread your chain. Make sure your work is on the right side. I don't know why you prefer to tie your string, but if it's at the back side, then you're going to just turn it like this. So this is going to depend on where you want your drawstring to face. If you don't want it at the front, then you're going to just turn your work to the back side. If you want it at the front, make sure your skirt is on the right side, at the front side. So I'll put mine at the back. 
and you're going to go in and out of every two stitches of the middle round of the waistband every two stitches all the way around just like that So this drawstring is going to act as something that adjusts our waist to either be tighter or looser. So when you make it all the way around, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have two strings. Make sure they're balanced. And you can cut off the excess here, or you can attach tassels or beads at the ends of the drawstring. Just cut off the excess yarn. And this is what I was talking about. You can either pull it to make the skirt tighter around the waist, or just loosen it up so that it can pass through the hips when you're wearing it. So at this point you can tie like that and then get rid of this tail and all the other tails that you have on your skirt. And that's it for today guys. This is what our final skirt looks like. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and uh, don't forget to check out the written pattern on all my online shops. I'll see you in my next one. Bye